This time, we're going to talk about the dreaded ugly design. But what is that? What is this ugly design? You don't want it, but do you have it? Hmm. First, I'm going to talk about a quote by Ernst Holmes. Ernst. Don't you love that name? Ernst. Anyway, he says, life is a mirror that reflects what we think into it. Hence, it's appropriate for this ugly concept, as what is ugly is what we are reflecting onto it, which will reflect back to it. Now, I want to be very clear. I am not talking about bad design, okay? There's a whole other, other issue. Uh, I am not talking about bad design. We'll leave that for another episode. We're talking about ugly design, which in itself is a perspective because what's ugly today is beautiful tomorrow. Ugly could be considered ill-proportioned, clashing, unconsidered, disruptive. And those are some of the qualities that we sort of feel when we see something ugly that we perceive as ugly, if I'm correct. Now, the Japanese in the 16th century had this style or a premise about this idea of imperfection being beautiful. They created this style called Wabi Sabi that celebrates imperfection and mistakes. And I'm going to let you know that that is a key to beauty over perfection on everything. When you're designing or when you're looking at designs for yourself, or your home or your interior, you should look at how to make the most beautiful space. But keep in mind, if it's too perfect, it's boring. You're predictable. You don't want to be predictable. You want to be you. So you need to have something that clashes, contradicts, causes you to say, hmm, what is that? Okay, you are causing a conversation. That's what you want is a conversation. So if you could think you could turn design your home or whatever you're working on, even your clothes into a conversation, the conversation becomes the beauty of the design. I was a good kid. Now, not a great kid, a good kid. And my brothers and sisters can let you know, no, he wasn't. I could tell you all the things he got in trouble with. Anyway, there was a field trip and I wanted to wear my favorite shirt, pants, and shoes. It, they were horrendous. Yeah, they were. And my mother was not having it. She was not having it. She said, you are not leaving this house with those clothes on. You're not leaving it. I'm telling you, you're not leaving it. And you know what? I would say, I said, no, I'm going. You know what? Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't tell anybody today that I'm your mother. Just get out of here. You can tell them tomorrow, not today. Just get out of here. So I got, I left. And I was happy because I was wearing all my favorite things. Um, they were really bad, but, and I kind of looked like I was pulled out of a bush backwards. A unicorn vomited on me, kicked some green and brown paint on my shoes and said, get on your way. <laughs> yeah, really bad. But the point I'm making is, I was very happy with what was going on. And I'm sure we were going to a, a field trip in New York City, I can remember, right? We were going to a few museums. I am so sure, without realizing it, I probably looked like a pretty trendy kid. I was like, ooh, look at that, you know, kid. Anyway, I was happy because it was my stuff. And they were clashing, but they were just wonderful. And it's amazing how you make some decisions that you like that actually work, but they don't work for other people. Ugly. How can we use it to our advantage? How can you use something to your advantage? Let's just change the word ugly for from now on to we need to have some sort of conversational piece in our homes. Something to talk about. Otherwise, there's nothing. Everything is the same. Everything is like everybody else's. So. It's the conversation that actually makes things beautiful because it causes interaction with people. 
And so my challenge to you, and I would like to hear the comments below, is to go and find something so out of on left field and so, like, if you want to say it ugly, and put it in your home and see what people say when they come in it. What you're doing is you're creating interest. And that's what you really want with design, to create interest. So if you choose so, you know what? I'm gonna go find something with you, okay? Let's go, I'm gonna find a piece with you and we'll see what it is. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're back and I found this piece that uh, I have to say is pretty extraordinary. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's see everything that is wrong with this. Everything that's wrong with this. First of all, it's a teapot, a sunburned camel with a palm tree. And, um, what do I say? Uh, yes, it's a vomiting camel sunburned with a palm tree on it and a desert. It, it just doesn't work. But what I could tell you about this piece is that, you know what? Let's go put it in a setting. I'm gonna see how this works in the setting and show you how it causes a conversation. Let's go. Here I am, here's the teapot. How do you like the tux? We're going to an event and I'm going to show you how this could look extraordinary along luxury pieces. Let's go upstairs. Come on. Okay, we're back. How did you like the tux? <laughs> Yes, yes, I know, I was trying to be conservative. I was trying to be very conservative. But anyway, what you saw was, is that the sunburned camel with the palm tree on it actually clashed so much that what you didn't see at that event was people were laughing. They were carrying on. They had to put their tea in there or their water in it. They had to see how it would be like, vomiting into their cup or whatever you want to say it was just so it's so wrong it's so wrong but what it did was the laughter at the table the people that were other tables came over to ask about this i just created beauty in the design because it caused interaction so be design becomes more than just four walls it becomes the community and so what you want to try to do with your space, with your architecture, with your home, with your clothes, give something that's a little bit off, a little bit different. Cause someone to come, hey, what is that? What is that? It doesn't mean that they don't like it. Doesn't even mean they like it either, but it causes this interaction where you would never have this conversation before. I want to show you some other examples of how clashing design works, whether it's an interior, architecture, clothing. Clashing like this against something beautiful actually is beautiful. It's in the eye of the beholder. And if we had everything so perfect, we wouldn't have so many nice things. It'd be one for everybody. But anyway, this was causes such a great conversation. I'm still laughing at what we at the fun that I had. So that's it, and thank you for coming. And that was our 10 minutes. And uh, 10 minutes, you, my mother would go, 10 minutes, you won't ever get back. Don't listen to his nonsense. He's doing some nonsense. Well, anyway, I'm glad you listened to my nonsense. And I'll have another design topic for you next time. And enjoy. And remember, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and you get to choose. Even this. Bye-bye. <laughs>